Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's iHogan22 here, and in today's video, we're going to be watching and giving my honest opinion on the reveal of the new Rainbow Six Siege season called Shadow Legacy. Uh, we're just going to be watching it through together, giving some of my thoughts and opinions on sort of what's going to be coming to the new season and things like that. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below, and let's just get straight into the video. In Operation Shadow Legacy, a legend steps out of the darkness and into the light as Sam Fisher comes to Rainbow Six Siege. Armed with a powerful new intel gathering gadget, a deadly new assault rifle, and a gruff demeanor honed over years of fieldwork, Fisher steps into his new call sign, Zero with all the swagger you'd expect from an icon. Perfect shot. But Shadow Legacy is about more than one operator. It's about a whole host of gameplay modifications that will change the way you play Siege. Ping 2.0, new and updated optics, a hard breaching secondary gadget, pooled reinforcements and map ban, plus the match replay alpha phase on the test server are just some of the updates that, along with a rework of the scenic chalet map, will ensure this season has a lasting legacy. Follow this channel to stay current with Siege announcements, and let's get into it. So, first thoughts, just even on that intro sort of section of the video, I mean, to be fair, from what we were hearing sort of whispers-wise and sort of what some of the guys involved with not only sort of making the game but playing the game were saying because I know sort of some of the pros and things like that they get their hands on it or they, they get the reveal of it should I say sort of uh, you know a few weeks if not up to a month early um, is that it's probably going to be like the most well, well the biggest change to the actual game itself sort of season wise ever so they were saying that because of so many different mechanics being sort of modified or changed or introduced that um it's going to sort of it's going to change the game the most than any sort of other season has uh, which is exciting in all honesty you know this is a game that's sort of what is it four years old now um so it's well, at least so it's good to sort of see that they're still trying to keep it fresh and make sort of not only the gameplay different and new but also sort of address things that us as the community of sort of the player base has been asking for or sort of questioning for a while now um, so it's nice to see that they're sort of changing it up and sort of still adding new um, game changing mechanics and sort of uh, game changing things to the game sort of even though it's been going on for so long so um, it's nice to see that um, so let's just carry on. It starts with Sam Fisher joining Team Rainbow as Zero, a medium speed medium armor attacker. His SC-3000K assault rifle may look familiar to fans of his previous work, and it's right at home in Siege with a variety of optics to suit your preferred style. He can also rock the MP7, and he's got a 5.7 USG sidearm with an integrated suppressor in keeping with his signature stealthy style. Speaking of which, check out the laser sight on his Argus launcher. It doesn't just have the look, it also delivers the goods. Intel. Ready. Argus launched. Always one to use cameras to his advantage, Zero can fire his Argus projectiles into breakable and reinforced surfaces to burrow through and create camera vision on both sides of the barrier. Walls, floors, patches, so and ceilings are all potential peak points for Zero and his allies. And though these two-way cameras can only look in one direction at a time, there's no more versatile way to get a look into a room the defenders don't want you to see. Even if they can't burrow all the way through, Zero's camera projectiles will still stick into most surfaces, opening up a world of possibilities for cheeky new camera placements. And it's not just intel they'll be gathering. Each Argus projectile can fire a single laser to destroy enemy gadgets That's or so deal good. minor damage to enemies themselves. Zero's gadget is a powerful new tool for the attacking team, so defenders will want to keep their eyes and ears peeled. The projectiles make a distinct sound when burrowing into place and can be easily destroyed with a bullet. Electrified surfaces will destroy the projectiles on contact. Also, mute jammers will keep them from functioning, while Wamai and Jaeger's gadgets will snap up any that fly by. But with so many places to deploy his gadget from relative safety, and so many ways to put it to use, Zero is sure to make his presence felt on Team Rainbow. 
Right, so just really quickly, because there's a lot to unpack there, in all honesty. So, there's only going to be one new operator this season, and he's an attacker. Uh, so, it's Sam Fisher from the Splinter Cell series. I've actually never played the Splinter Cell series myself, actually. I know it's a Tom Clancy game, obviously, like Sieges. Um, but I've never actually played the games uh, myself. I know there's a few of them. Um, so, I'm not too familiar on him, himself. But, obviously, I've seen enough about him to sort of understand what his sort of character is like in them games. And I feel like that's... That's what they're trying to bring over to this game as well. is quite similar. Um, so, first of all, in regards to sort of his loadout, apparently his AR is going to be really good. It's it's quite quite low recall but fast firing. So, uh, I assume that the maybe the damage per second isn't the best. But um, in the end of the day, you know, if it's accurate, then you know if you're hitting the headshots that you should be, then uh, it should be no problem whatsoever. Um, the MP7 on attack that's interesting obviously that's not something that we've ever seen before that having a, an smg like that on attack so that would be interesting i don't assume that would be played too much um, i assume it probably would be the his main ar that's played the most um, again it's sort of good to see that they're again swapping things up changing things around giving what is only has only ever been a defender weapon uh, giving it to the attack side especially something like the mp7 it's just quite interesting um in regards to before we get onto his gadget, the rest of his loadout, he's got frag grenades. Now, especially since last season when they changed around which operators had nades and who didn't, um, that's quite big. So not only is he um, a really good intel gatherer, he's also a hard um, breach denial stopper uh, in regards to that sort of one sort of twitch shock that he's got. Um, and he's got nades. So, I mean... He looks very, very strong. I don't know if maybe once he comes out, the nades is maybe something that gets taken away from him after a while. Um, I mean, they've had it long enough to think about it, but, you know, they do sort of change things um, when someone just comes out or before someone just comes out. But him having nades as well seems very strong. I'm not going to say too strong, obviously, because, you know, we've not even played as him yet. Uh, I'll see how he's going to affect the game properly, but um, him having nades is is, is big. It's, it's a lot bigger than some maybe some people would give it credit for, maybe, uh, you know, sort of more casual players, but um, him having sort of the frag grenades on top of his loadout as it is, is, is very strong. Um, moving on to the gadget, it's called the, the Argus Launcher. From what I've seen from the clips, I'm, I'm pretty sure he gets four of them, which is, is a lot, in all honesty. Again, Maybe that's something that's changed later down the line to maybe three or even two. Um, obviously, in regards to the the twitch shocks that they can do, it can only do one per uh, one per sort of um, drone, if if you want to call them that. So again, that's not too crazy. I mean, crazy enough if you use them well, just because I mean that's you know four bandit batteries if you want, or you know two Kaids, uh, both Kaid um, gadgets. So we'll see how that goes sort of down the line. Again, him having four seems very strong um might be something that's changed later down the line again with that you know i have to sort of wait and see but it looks really cool in regards to the gadget itself it looks incredible i mean the whole point that not only can you shoot it into a wall for example a ceiling and you can look up and down obviously only one way at one time um and i don't assume if he's dead that that's something that your teammates can swap and change i assume that's only him on let's just sort of say his tablet um, that you can swap and change looking from one side to the other side um, but I mean that's strong in itself I mean not even putting the twitch shock on it just him being able to put a, pop a drone in a wall and look both sides and switch in, in sort of between because that acts as both things then if you put on an objective wall you can see it inside the objective but then turn it around it's sort of almost like flank watch depending on sort of what map you're on and where it's placed um, so gadget wise by itself it's incredible um, obviously then like I said he's then got a really strong loadout with it so he looks like he's going to be sort of a must play in all honesty um, but I mean yeah that that gadget's incredible and like I said it's got that you know one twitch shock as well per um, per drone which just seems really good probably my only concern with the gadget is on the defender side of things um, I just hope that they can be easily heard when they're deployed, first of all. From what they're saying, you can hear them. It makes a very distinct noise, which is good, because um, you can no know to look out for it then. Um, but also, if people are using them as sort of like flank watch, um, I just hope as a roamer, you can see them quite well. I mean, not that they stick out and it's really obvious, because then there's no point of having them uh, you know, as sort of flank watch, but I hope you can see them well enough to... Um, 
if you're looking for them, you'd be able to see it. Obviously, there's going to be some sort of crazy spots that people set up for them. I understand that, just like there is drones and all honesty. You know, it's no different to that. But I just hope because of the mechanic of mechanic of you being able to sort of put it wherever uh, into any sort of surface almost, um, that yeah, you will be able to see it if you're looking for it. Um, so probably that'd be my only concern as a sort of counterpoint to him being you know looking so strong. Um, I mean, what else is there? I mean, oh, that's probably the last thing in regards to his, his Twitch shock. This is it can trigger a Goyo shield. I mean, that that's big as well. I mean, I know that the Twitch drone itself can't do that at the minute. Um, a bit bizarre that this is going to be able to, but the Twitch drone can't. I mean, maybe that's something that is changing. I've just not mentioned it in sort of this notes or this video, should I say. Um, but, yeah, again, really strong. Just giving sort of more um, sort of more power and more reason to play him over you know somebody else in regards to on the attack uh, information wise i don't think there's another information operator attacking operator that's probably going to be as good as a, a zero um i'm just trying to think now i mean iq obviously in regards to gadgets and things like that but n not in regards to physical actual cameras on site and then being able to destroy them um by sort of being completely safe and being on the other side of the wall outside the objective. I mean, it seems really, really strong and he looks really fun to play. Um, excited to get my hands on him. Again, him being the only operator in this season, there's no other attacker and there's no defenders being added, but there is a sort of a map rework and obviously they've changed a lot of other sort of game mechanics and things like that as well. So um, let's just continue the video and we'll sort of carry on from there. Now, you may have noticed that some of the pings from Zero's Argus cameras look different from what you're used to. Welcome to Ping 2.0, an evolution of the Ping system designed to give you better tools to communicate and coordinate with your squad. Each player will be assigned a numbered ping marker every match, so you know who's calling out what. You'll be able to ping from drones and cameras, and pings will now show contextual information when you point out gadgets, the diffuser, and other objects of interest. Operation Shadow Legacy is a season chock full of improvements like this. So let's run you through a few more. So just really quickly, because that's it's a sort of a slight change, but it's a nice one. Uh, so it's the new ping system. They're calling it Ping 2.0. Um, it's quite cool. I mean, it's giving you, in regards to, especially on comms, I know sort of some people may play this game a little bit more casually, or if, even if they do play on ranked quite often, they may not sort of play in sort of a, a four or five stack. Um, per se where they're sort of playing with a few friends um, so even if you're just playing with one teammate what you can do is if you're not all on mic together on a team and you're playing with randoms and people you don't know this new ping system allows you to give even more information without saying it over mic so you know we're going into an object and I'm saying uh, you know there's a C4 prepped at a door or something like that um, you don't even need to you don't need to necessarily call that out on mic anymore. You can ping it. It's going to come up for all your other teammates of that it's not only your ping, but what you've pinged. It gives you the little icon symbol that, you know, that is a C4 or that is a Goyo shield or that is barbed wire. So um, in regards to that new ping system, if anything, that's just going to really benefit people that play in sort of, uh, well, less than four or five stacks. Um, but again, even for people that play in four, four or five stacks, you know, Siege is very hectic. You've got three minutes to not only uh, well on the attacking side of things three minutes to not only drone the building out get in the building and then execute on site so um a lot of information is probably missed and passed i know it is on my team um so in regards to you then getting near the objective and being able to give information not only on mic but then obviously visually wise giving a visual cue um yeah that's that's only good there's, there's no downside or no negative that i can see anyway at this point to the new ping system um my only concern was that you may be able to ping multiple things at a time and it might be a bit too crazy visual wise but from the looks of it you can't just then on the video you saw he, he pings the goyo shield and then he pinged the um uh, the Malusi, the Banshee gadget, uh, and it once they pinged the second thing, the first thing no longer had a ping on it, so that's good. It means that just like it is now, you can ping one thing, but then if you ping a second thing, it's going to then get rid of, of the first ping, which is good, because like I said, you don't want, you know, you're looking at your screen, you can just see 10 pings, because again, that'd be probably be too much, it'd be too overwhelming, so um, yeah, I, I don't really see any negative impact or outcome of, of this new ping system it's just something that's that's nice it's just going to give a, a slight ease to sort of the gameplay like i said especially with people that are not playing sort of you know four or five stacks so it, yeah it's good 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 addition good change let's just carry on from there 
Another area where you may have spotted some changes is the optics on the weapons. There are some new scopes and new magnification levels, so look for the classic ACOG to be reinvented as the 2.5X. Okay. There are also some redesigned sights, including a new red dot and a new holographic, as well as a general overhaul on which operators have which optics for which guns. Plus, you can now customize the color and opacity of your reticles to see your targets in a whole new light. So, just really quickly on, on, on that point of view then, so in regards to the optics, again, just a, a nice addition, I, I don't really see a negative to this, it's just them giving us more customised, uh, sort of customisable options, uh, more chance to sort of make our load out the way that we want it. Um, in regards to the sight, so from what I can see, it's the colour that can be changed, it's the physical sight itself, obviously, depending on which sight you're choosing, you know, Red dot, two point five times, three times, etc., etc., um, and then the, yeah, the, the opacity of the of the um, of the scope as well. From what I can see, and um, th there's no way that you can change the the size of it, um, which again is fine. I just hope that some of these sites are too big; they take up too much of the scope. Um, I know that was something that um, was maybe an issue in sort of past seasons. I mean quite a few seasons ago in all honesty but I remember that the the scopes were quite big um, the reticles were quite big sorry and um, they did reduce them significantly um, in past seasons I just remember the the green triangle for example you know it took up a decent size of of the middle of your uh, of your site and then they, they really reduced it to be sort of quite small and minute which was nice because like I said you want to have as much accuracy as much control as possible so that would probably be my only concern um, with the sights, I know that um, Pengu uh, has talked about it as well in probably his recent video. He used to talk about it a lot again before that change was made. So, um, yeah, I just hope that that's not the case and these new sights are going to fill up too much of the scope itself. But, um, again, you're probably you're going to have so many customizable options by the looks of it. I'm sure there's a way that you can find one that you know, you'd know you benefit and, you, and you'd like as well. So, again, positive, nice change, nice new addition, nice that they're sort of adding things and making it as customizable as, up, uh, sort of, as possible, really. So... Uh, let's just get straight back into it again. There's also a change coming on the defender side as all of the reinforcements will now be drawn from a shared pool. The team will have 10 reinforcements that anyone so can good. use, no matter how many players start the match. This means that a speedy teammate can now secure more than two hatches, and anchors won't have to worry about roamers scurrying off to the far reaches of the map without reinforcing the site. That is such a nice addition like i know that it's probably something that we've been asking for for a long time now uh, and i mean again not not a game developer uh, not a game creator but it didn't seem like something that'd be too difficult to do um having some uh, sort of a reinforcement pool as i think they're calling it um but again so good i mean how many times do you uh, see that your your yeah i think they mentioned it like your cat can or your jaeger um or someone has gone and set stuff up off site and then wait one of the main walls isn't reinforced and you can't do it for them they have to come back to site and do it or they're caught out before they can get back to site so uh, again just something that's such a nice change and it's gonna it's gonna benefit both casual and ranked gameplay in regards to casual first it's gonna help out because if you do have teammates that maybe not taking it as seriously they're running around trying to get you know spawn peaks or hiding in the deep dark you know depths of the map uh, waiting for someone to sort of come into the uh, the building first of all and they've not reinforced you can do it for them it literally means if you're playing anchor you could reinforce all 10 walls if you needed to uh, obviously you, that probably won't be the case but again that option is there for you um, and then in regards to maybe more serious gameplay like ranked or pro league even um, again it's just going to make their guys sort of set up times even quicker because uh, then guys where they sort of they need to set up rotations traps um, sort of set up their strats for the sort of objective and things like that depending on what map they're on it's just going to make it so much easier because now your roamer or whoever needs to do the rotations or set up doesn't need to spend you know what is it setting up a reinforcement i think it's five seconds um so they don't need to waste 10 seconds of the 40 second prep phase um d d sort of setting up so again just such a nice uh, change i don't not too sure why it's not been added in sooner um but again you know you can't really complain it's here now um but again such a nice sort of new addition to, to doing that because it's going to help all aspects of gameplay whether that's casual ranked or the pro league setting so it's, it's again only a positive for me there's no negatives to that and i don't even see any sort of negatives that could come off that um so yeah nice addition yet again 
but you'll have to keep a keen eye on those reinforcements because a new hard breaching secondary gadget means that the attackers now have a new way to bust on through. The gadget will start fusing as soon as the deploy animation is completed, and though it can be interrupted in the usual ways, defenders will now have to be wary of more than just Thermite, Hibana, Maverick, and Ace punching holes in their reinforced walls and hatches. So, the, the, so they've added this now, so it's like a secondary gadget uh, for some attacking operators, which is a, it's sort of like a little breach um, a little breach hole that it's going to make. It's either a sort of a, a crouching, walking one or a vaulting one. So it's not it's not massive, but you know enough to get into sight, enough to sort of vault over or sort of crouch uh, in. Um, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this. Um, with the addition of Ace from the last season, I feel like the attacking operators have a lot of potential breach-wise now. I mean, like they just mentioned there, there's four potential hard breaches at the minute that you can pick from. Thermite, Hibana, Ace, and Maverick. Um, obviously, Maverick's slightly harder in regards to maybe getting a full wall open, but you can still do it. You know, you're still bringing something like a Sophia or an Ash or someone or a, or a book. Um, I'm not sure if this was needed. Now, I don't know if one of the changes that they've not... I mean, I don't think they've mentioned it in the video yet, but they might do it later on, but I know it's already a thing. That... Um, on some maps, for example, the roof hatches are going to be reinforced as default. So when you spawn into a map, the hatches that are on the roofs are already going to be reinforced. Like So you can no longer go onto the top of Theme Park, for example, or Chalet, and just open the, the hatches because they'd be soft. They're not anymore. They're going to be They're going to be reinforced. So... That is obviously, if you were just bringing one hard breacher, for example, a Thermite or a, a, a Havana, then you don't really want to waste utility like that on hatches which used to just be soft anyway. Again, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about that change or this secondary hard breach. I understand this secondary hard breach if that the hatches being sort of reinforced on roofs and things is default, and then I get this secondary hard breach. It's probably needed, just so your hard breachers don't have to waste all their utility on the outside of the building before they've even got to the objective. Um, so again, I get it for that point of view. I don't think I like the hatches becoming sort of as set as default reinforced. Because um, again, it's also taking away from your soft breaches uh, sort of need to be there even. Uh, like I said, if if, if, um, if you need a hard breacher just to get into it and then you need a hard breacher then get through the wall on the main site, the soft breach then almost becomes you know, a bit more, maybe not useless, but a bit more sort of not 100% needed as the hard breacher would then be. And then also, you don't want it to be where you sort of, you have to bring two hard breaches every round. You know, there's a lot of operators in Siege now, especially with new characters like Zero and things like that, where you want to bring a sort of a vast, a sort of uh, a multi-skilled lineup in regards to, you know, what they can do and what their gadgets can do and things like that. So, yeah, so you don't, you know, you don't want to have to bring, you know, an Ace and a Thermite just to not only get into the building but then get onto the site you know because then you've only got three operator picks then that you know that are left so again these secondary hard breaches i get it if that hatch uh, if sort of the the outside hatches are going to be reinforced as default i then understand that change and from my understanding there's not a lot of operators that have this secondary breach um i think there's around sort of five or six um or maybe even seven um but uh, even then they're not sort of operators that you would mainly say are must-haves you know, there's, I think, Capitao, you know, as you can see in the clip, is, is one. Um, I think Nook's one, Lion's one, which you saw as well in the clip. Um, so these are, you know, they're not operators that are going to be picked anyway. They're now going to have to be picked maybe because of this, you know, of the secondary reinforcement gadget, which, again, maybe sort of is why Ubisoft are doing it. They're trying to get some operators that maybe got a really low sort of pick rate um, to, to, to get sort of up and move up that. So they're, they're sort of being picked more, so they're more reliable and more viable. You know, I do get that standpoint of it from their side. Um, but in regards to maybe how it's going to affect the sort of the high levels of sort of ranked and... Um, and Pro League especially. Um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see in regards to the hatch thing again. That might be something that they change. Um, but yeah, this secondary reinforcement, again, it's cool. It's nice that they're adding it. I don't really feel like it's an absolute must or it was an absolute necessity. I don't feel like, oh, I wish we had more hard breach potential, you know, when playing, especially this recent season with uh, with Ace. But again, nice to have. I don't see any sort of issue with, with it being there. Um, again, 
with with the with the hatch mechanic, the sort of new it being reinforced, I do understand it really. So um, yeah, again, don't really see massive complaints about the gadget itself. So we'll just have to sort of see how it plays in the in the new season. How you defend those reinforcements will change a bit with Operation Shadow Legacy, thanks to an update to Thatcher's EMP grenade. The electric blast will now temporarily disable gadgets instead of destroying them outright, meaning the gadgets will come back online once the disable ends. So now, for example, Legion's mines will simply be revealed, and Bandit's batteries will become non-operational yet remain in place. Attackers will have to time their pushes to take advantage of the disabled state before the defender's utility powers back up while defenders who like to bandit trick will have to get a little trickier. Fortunately, the Rainbow Six Siege team has been working on ways to help you work on your tricks. So, the Thatcher rework. Because I've seen a lot of people talking about this as well and sort of um, complaining about it and sort of giving their thoughts on it. My thoughts on it is it's, it's obviously it's a massive nerf to, to Thatcher. It, it just is. Fact. Um... However, from what I am seeing and sort of what I play, you know, when I play this game either on a daily basis or, or you know, sort of every other day, um, I would say whether it's my team doing it or the opposition team, I would go as far to say nine out of ten games, or maybe eight out of ten. So you know, sort of you know, around there, I would say sort of eighty to ninety percent definitely um, of games that we play, Thatcher is banned. Um, he just is, like I said, whether that's our team doing it for tactical reasons or their team doing it, um, he, he, he just is. He, he's banned, you know, at the minute, I understand he throws his, there's not a massive interaction, maybe you could say, he throws his EMP down, it destroys literally everything that's in his radius, whether that's an ADS, a bandit battery, a Kaid, uh gadgets, you know, an electroclaw, um, you know, cameras. I do, I, I get it, I, I, I do get it. Um, so I think what they're going for in regards to this is they're trying to really drop that ban rate of, of Thatcher down because um, like I said I mean I'm sure when they released the you know the stats of the season a few weeks back now because I know that his ban rate is sort of really up there you know with the likes of you know people like Jacqueline and things like that on attack so I get I do get it I get it from the standpoint of they're trying to make Thatcher banned less and played more so i i do get that aspect of it because um he would be you know in regards to i, I think that if you were banning operators now because he doesn't just have to throw his emp down it and destroys everything in its in its path it probably will be he will be banned less that will happen 100 percent. whether that's dramatically or just ever so slightly it will change it 100 percent will i don't think people will now continue to ban thatcher that they sort of uh, the sort of current way that they do um but yeah, so I get it from from sort of the developer standpoint. They want this character to be played more, banned less. I do get the change. In regards to the change as well, it doesn't really change a massive amount in regards to sort of wall denial. The bandit still has to put, you know, has still has to bandit trick actively and things like that. Um, probably it just makes it slightly easier for anything because instead of you know him having two bandits down on a wall and him having two in his back pocket to to actively bandit trick, you know when. A Thatcher would put them down and you know they get blown up and get destroyed um, he can trick with the ones that are there so again you know quite an, quite a nice sort of new interaction that sort of anyone that's you know sort of trying to trick a wall with Kaid's electroclaws or bandits um, bandit batteries it's going to be sort of a new interaction for them I mean it's not a role that I necessarily do when I play on my team but um, it's, it's just again just something that's going to be different uh, it means it's something that you just have to get used to again I only think it's probably a benefit for the defenders, like I said, Bandit now no longer, no longer needs to have sort of two stored in his back pocket. He can use the two that are on the wall, and then he can go and put two on a different wall. Um, so, yeah, again, I don't see this as a massive negative. Probably I would say that maybe Thatcher did need some sort of rework just because of sort of the, the sort of really high ban rate that he was getting at the minute. Um, so, yeah, again, I don't see this as a, as a negative or maybe necessarily as a positive. I just sort of see it as something that is sort of new and we're going to have to get used to, really. In addition to the new My Siege Stats tool on Rainbow6.com, which gives you a deeper look at your in-game performance, the highly anticipated Match Replay feature is coming to the Operation Shadow Legacy test servers for its alpha phase. Load up any of your past 12 matches and watch them through from the spectator camera view or from the perspective of any player in the match. 
whether you're analyzing enemy tactics, recording some personal highlights, or answering the evergreen question of how did they get me, Match Replay is one of the most powerful learning tools to come to Rainbow Six Siege. Be sure to use it on the test server and give the team some feedback to help them make it even better. That's massive. I mean, uh, in regards to, I mean, my team personally, you know, we play on PS4, we don't play on PC or anything like that, so, you know, it's not the exact same level, but, you know, we play at high platinum ranks. Um, so, in regards to being able to go in for your last 12 games as well, that's a lot. I mean, it's not like they're giving you a restriction of, oh, it's, you know, it's only your last three, it's only your last five. It's your last 12 games. And, um, you know, when you're talking about a game being, you know, 30 to 50 minutes long, depending on, you know, how many rounds are involved, that's that's a lot of, of games you can go back and look at. Um, and they're not even restricting you in, in regards to you can only watch your gameplay. You can switch to any of the 10 operators in a single round, whether that's your team uh, or the other team. So, um, or like I said, watch from a spectator view like they do on Pro League sometimes when they're sort of, you know, setting up and things like that. So... This replay system is massive. Whether that's uh, you sort of want to review tactics with your team, see what worked well, see what didn't work well, or you just want to sort of have a look and, like you said, and maybe get some you know highlights and things like that in regards to sort of content creators. But this replay system is massive. I honestly never thought. I know people have wanted it for a long time. You know, a bit like sort of Fortnite introduced it a while back now. Um, I never thought that Siege would get it just because of how much there seems to be going on in sort of in, in, in one match in, in sort of in one round there's a lot of information going on there's a lot of sort of operators setting up uh, that you know the map has changed things like that I just never I just never thought they'd get to a point where they would introduce this or not anytime soon anyway so the fact that they're sort of you know bringing sort of like a a bit of a um, an alpha or a beta version of it out um, for the time being is going to be great because like I said this is only a positive. Again, there's no negatives to this for me. If people want to go in and sort of review their own gameplay, they can. This is probably one of my best things about this new season is, is this replay system. It's, it's, it's going to be really sort of handy to have. I, I love it, really. One more thing before we talk about the new map rework, and that's Map Ban. Coming to the ranked and unranked playlists, Map Ban will follow in the footsteps of the Operator Pick and Ban phase to give you a little more control over the matches you get into. And yes, there's a fresh rework coming to that map pool. The Chalet map rework brings some new navigation options to the venerable retreat, notably the ability to repel all the way up and traverse the rooftop. Master bedroom renovations have enclosed the bedroom terrace and added an interior staircase down to the trophy room, while a new basement corridor offers a new rotation route between bomb sites. And beware the new window above the much contested garage door. The snowmobile won't save you from that sight line. The chalet map rework and all the new features and gameplay modifications in this video will be free for all players at the launch of Operation Shadow Legacy. Sam Fisher, aka Zero, will be unlocked for Year 5 pass holders exclusively at launch and will be available for everyone else to purchase seven days later with Renown or R6 credits. Follow this channel to keep up with the latest in Siege news and visit us at news.ubisoft.com. Right, so they're just wrapping it up there. So in regards to the map ban, I love that. Sort of more positive than negatives, but first with the positives, there is just some maps that you naturally hate. I know us on our team, we, we have a few maps that we just, one of us despises or a couple of us sort of just can't stand playing on, whether that's due to tactics, you know, just how, you know, our style of play and how we would play on that map, it just doesn't work or it doesn't gel or we just, you know, can not figure out a really solid sort of tactic on it, whether that's attack or defense. So... Yeah, uh, the map ban, I, I love that idea. I love that it's been introduced a bit like the, the ban phase for the operators. That was so good when it was introduced. It was such a nice, clean thing. You didn't have to go up against you know certain operators, things like that on certain maps, which would make it almost impossible to sort of attack or defend on. Um, so, yeah, this is just, just like that. It's just going to bring a, a, a new dimension to sort of how you're playing the game. And in regards to sort of staying away from the maps that you or the team just hate, it's just going to help with that. Um, in regards to maybe negatives... I, I just don't want it to be a, sort of in a place where maybe there's I mean it's going to happen but there's a there's a map that you and your team love playing on and you have really good strats on and it always gets banned because it may be a map that other teams really despise I mean that's just going to be you know the way that it falls but I mean that's not going to be the case you know all the time you know there's three maps you ban one they ban one and then you're left with the you know the one that's left over so I still feel like you would probably play 
you'll probably play every map almost still maybe with one exception you might your team might always ban one specific map if it comes up um but yeah overall you're probably going to still end up playing you know all the maps just maybe the maps that you dislike more so or less uh, which again is only a positive the only negative is that you, you hopefully will still play the maps that you like but um yeah i, I mean again only a positive for me in regards to that uh, and then the last thing is the chalet rework i mean again this is personal preference but i didn't have a massive issue with chalet um i know that s some boys on my team um like it um and, and some don't necessarily too much so again personal preference but i personally didn't have a massive issue with it um i thought attacking wise as long as you brought the right operators you could execute some good sort of site pushes defender wise again as long as you had some sort of decent strat set up you were watching sort of you know each and every avenue that the attackers could push it was defendable was you know with the sites especially that you know the sort of main garage site and the the kitchen uh, and trophy site um so you know again nice that they're, they're reworking these maps i like that they're sort of retouching in the, the maps my only concern is i know they've done that with one or two maps already that me and my team don't really feel like they've necessarily made better um but again you know we'll, we can't sort of comment on that until we've played it but i didn't have a massive problem with chalet so we'll see how the new chalet plays um i like the sort of whole aspect that you can repel all the way onto the roof and cross over like that it saves time from running all the way around the side to get to the other side of the map because that's annoying sometimes and especially on a map like chalet where there's so many sort of different windows and places you can get peeked from that can be annoying when you're trying to rotate around the other side of the map on attack so again more of a positive than a negative is the new chalet everywhere but we'll have sort of a wait and see how it plays right guys so that's really it for the, the sort of reveal of the new season that shadow legacy for me the positives far outweigh any sort of negatives or concerns um i mean if i if i would had to rate it i would say pre obviously getting my hands on it eight out of ten at least um excited for the new operator zero in regards to sam fisher excited to sort of see how his gadget works and how it sort of mixes up the gameplay and just excited for all these new gameplay mechanics you know being introduced the reticles um the sort of the ping system secondary um hard breach you know it's just going to be it's exciting it's going to be a really good season and like sort of everyone has been saying it's probably going to be the season that it's switching things up the most and changing the most um which again is only good for a game that sort of this you know this sort of amount of years old now it's it's only ever good that we have sort of changes and and things that come in and mix it up a little bit so uh, i'm excited to play that to, to play the new season i have to say Right guys, so if, if you did like this video, you liked my sort of review video, um, I will maybe try and do more in the future in regards to sort of, you know, seasons, whether that's, you know, R6 or other games. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe, like and comment down below and make sure you turn that notification bell on just to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos and I'll see you in the next one guys. Thanks so much for watching, bye bye.